We're going to take a real quick look at how we designed the paintbrush holder. There's nothing terribly fancy in here and there are likely better ways to do everything we've done here. Um, but this was a specifically a quick project just to get some paintbrushes held. So as with everything, we start off with a sketch and our center circle was about 0.625 inches. Um, in our actual design file, we put this in as a parameter so we could use different supports if necessary. Uh, for example, if you had a half inch outside diameter dowel or um, you wanted to use uh, multiple smaller supports as the original did, well, they were bigger, um, but we would use something smaller because those were too big. So we just um, made a quick circle there and then um, we offset that and we went 1.5 millimeters uh, even though the design is in inches I still think in millimeters and the outside circle was similar um, I think we went with about a three inch outside circle and we came up with that number uh, just by eyeballing how much space we wanted uh, for our final design. So that ends up being about three inches. We offset that, again, the 1.5 millimeter wall size. Uh, a thicker wall size would likely be somewhat better, but it, it isn't too bad. Um, with our MakerBot method using their the PLA that shipped with it, it's actually sturdier than we thought it was going to be given the small wall size. Um, two millimeters would probably be a, a better bet or even thicker if you are so inclined. Um, but it, it wasn't bad. The inner circle uh, was about... Uh, I forget exactly, but it was about... Um, I think one, it was more than one and a half. I'll say one and 24, 30 seconds or something like that. Um, it doesn't matter a whole lot, especially for the purposes of this uh, demonstration. So we'll make it um, uh, just like that. And then again, same uh, wall thickness. And in general, uh, these are things you want to parameterize. Uh, for the purposes of this, we're not um, just just for the the sake of time. But anytime you do something like this, it's it's almost always worth the extra time to parameterize what you're doing, uh, simply because um, you can change it. That's that's kind of the whole point of parametric uh, design. For the ribs there are multiple ways you could do this um, we we kind of took the the easy way out and uh, again since mostly we were just testing to see what what kind of build quality we can get um, uh, pretty good by the way so we just drew a line out from the center and uh, offset it from a uh, line that went from the uh, center of the circle to the outside edge. And uh, again, since we didn't really care too much about how this was going to end up working eventually, we went ahead and deleted all these. In general, like, you want to have a fully constrained file uh, or, or drawing, but it's it's not a huge deal. Um, it's just something to keep in mind. And then we actually, again, it doesn't matter a lot, but we clean up these lines to put them on the circle. It's, it's not a super important distinction to make. Um, but it's always nice to be somewhat accurate. 
So then in the sketch, uh, not in the 3D model, we then created a circular pattern around the center point of the circle. And I think we had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I think one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We spun ten of those around uh, the center point. Uh, looks good. And then for the outside ones, we did the same thing. Uh, again, around the center point. And I think there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. So we'll just go ahead and type in 14. And that was actually the bulk of our design work. Um, and I'm not going to go through the whole process here, but basically we extruded all of these up. By the way, if anybody knows an easier way to uh, select a whole bunch of things to extrude, that'd be great because this gets really annoying really fast. Um, and our next one is going to be closer to our inspirational paintbrush holder and have more paintbrush sections. Um, and I don't want to do this. So we just extruded it up about five millimeters. Um, that seemed to be a, a good enough thing. Um, we filled it all of these edges, uh, both inside and outside. I'm not going to do that now. And we chamfered the uh, entrance and exit where the copper tubing goes and the outside and the bottom and they were there it was a very small chamfer so these these fillets here um, were one millimeter so I'll just do a, a quick um, show of, of what that looks like uh, just so you can see and those were all one millimeter and we filled it all of these oh, something's gone wrong did I well in any case we we um, filled it um, all of these uh, internal sections uh, just about a quarter millimeter just to give it a little bit of round because that's a word um, and uh, like I said we chamfered we, we chamfered this on top and bottom, top and bottom here. Uh, the top and the bottom are actually the same piece. So what we did was we copied all of this and then we just went to the bottom and um, extruded, again, selecting all of these sections. We just extruded all of this down uh, about two millimeters, which is what we usually use for our, our bases. Um, so I, I won't go through the whole thing here. Um, so we just extruded that down, um, negative two millimeters, right? And that's, that's our bottom. Um, obviously we did the entire bottom and you don't actually need to do that. Uh, you could have just left it open, but once the paintbrush is sitting in the holder, it will be relatively vertical. And we thought it would be better to have a bottom that was solid just in case any drips did roll down the brushes. Um, not a big deal. So that, that was actually, uh, pretty much the design process for this. Um, nothing complicated, uh, an easy copy of a commercial product and, uh, yeah, that's, that's it. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to comment. Uh, feel free to check out the blog that discusses this. This design is available on Thingiverse. Uh, go get one, print one out, see what you think, modify it. If you do, uh, let us know what you did and what we could have done better. Um, and definitely give us Fusion 360 tips. We, we know enough to get by, but not enough necessarily to do things the most efficient way possible. So we're always open to receiving information. Thanks again.